This is KGW News at Sunrise. Well, good morning. Thanks for getting up with us on this Sunday. I'm Tim Gordon. This morning on Sunrise, paying tribute while searching for answers, how friends and family of a taxi driver murdered on the job are honoring a man who they say got along with everyone. Plus, protecting our pollinators, a couple of steps that nearly everyone can take to help local bees continue to thrive. But before we get to all that, let's check in with Chris McGinnis for a quick look at the Sunday forecast. I know what would help local bees to thrive. Some warm, sunny weather to get all the <laughs> flowers go. open up. And <laughs> I have that in my 7 day forecast. Just not today. All right, this morning we are waking up to rain. Here's a look at uh, radar right now. And if you're just waking up, I want to tell you this. Most of the rain that we were going to see today on Sunday has already fallen. That said, we still have a chance of showers throughout the day. You can see the progress that the steadier rain has made over the last three hours. We still have some sprinkles offshore and we will likely see one or two showers pop up during the day. Right now, Rose City Sky Camera showing a gray sky over downtown. The sun up in about 10 minutes or so. Waking up to temperatures that are generally in the 50s, 52 Westland, 54 in Portland, slipping south into the Willamette Valley, 52 Salem. So we're in the same ballpark as where we were yesterday morning. I just don't think we're going to see the bright spots in the clouds like we saw yesterday. We really did manage to see a little sun yesterday, and that was nice. We got up to 66. Today, we'll probably keep it in the upper 50s. And again, uh, Tim, there is that chance of a shower. Most folks probably will not see that much more rain today. All right, Chris, thanks a lot. Appreciate that. Well, we've got a couple of traffic alerts for you this morning. The Bridges to Bruce race has shut down some access ramps to a few bridges across the Willamette River. Until 1130 this morning at the Morrison Bridge, the right eastbound lane and the southeast Water Avenue ramp will be closed for the 8K and 10K run walk. At the Broadway Bridge, access to and from Broadway will be shut down. Some sidewalks and bike lanes will also be closed at those spots along with sidewalks on the Hawthorne Bridge. Now, the second closure involves I-5 South on the lower deck of the Markham Bridge. Inspectors will be there starting at 10 o'clock tonight and going through 5 tomorrow morning, so drivers will have to detour onto I-405 South. Well, new this morning, Oregon State Athletics Director Scott Barnes is in a California hospital this morning. The school says he experienced a medical event last night, but didn't give further details. Barnes was attending an event at Fresno State when this happened. Barnes has been AD at Oregon State since 2016. Well, Saturday afternoon, dozens of people gathered to pay tribute to a radio cab driver who authorities say was murdered by his passenger. 43-year-old Reese Lahan was beloved by his friends and colleagues alike. And as Kale Williams reports, with a suspect now charged with Lahan's killing, the focus is on remembering his life. Reese Lahan had been a radio cab driver in Portland for more than a decade. But to those who knew him well, he was much more than that. Reese was an amazing artist and musician. Um, he moved up to Portland to do that. That's Ellen Jacobs, a family friend who knew Lahan in his native Texas before he moved to the Pacific Northwest to pursue his creative passions. She was one of more than 100 people who gathered in Southeast Portland Saturday to remember Lahan at the very spot where he was killed just two weeks before near Southeast Washington and Water Avenue. That's where Lahan picked up Moses Lopez around 640 on April 8th, according to court documents. With no warning, police say Lopez stabbed Lahan from the back seat. Lopez was arrested nearby and has since pleaded not guilty to second degree murder charges. But Saturday's vigil was much less about the end of a life and more about a life well lived. He might have like done his own thing and kind of been on his path, but for his friends and family, he'd like always have their back no matter what. Lahan's death has left a void at Radio Cab. That's according to Darren Campbell, director of marketing for the company. Every driver is, is kind of a brick to our our makeup, our wall of success. And and when you pull a brick out, especially one that that is as important as, as Reese was, it weakens that wall a little bit. I mean, we'll, we'll patch it up, we'll put it back together, but it's a loss, it's definitely a loss for us. But Lahan's ability to get along with just about anyone was evident in his record. In over 10 years, he never had a single complaint with us and, and the best of the best get complaints, so that says something. Still, the killing of a beloved member of the taxicab community has left other drivers searching for answers. There's a lot of anger, a lot of just not able to understand why this happened. Um, and there's no putting the pieces together to figure this one out. Uh, there just isn't. There will be discussions, Campbell said, 
about installing safety barriers between drivers and their passengers. But those discussions will come in the days and weeks ahead. On Saturday, the taxi cab drivers of Portland were focused on one thing, paying tribute to one of their own as only they could. This is an opportunity for, for not just the radio cab family, but the taxi family of, of Portland to come together and recognize, you know, Reese um, in the only way they know how, and that's to come together and drive. And in eastern Oregon, hundreds of people turned out for the funeral of Nyssa Reserve Police Officer Joseph Johnson. Corporal Johnson died last weekend. Authorities say he was fatally shot following a car chase after initially trying to stop a man suspected of damaging property and making threats. Here's some of what Nyssa's police chief shared. He was a man that here on earth put on the armor that we have and go out to work every day to fight evil. And as a reserve officer, a man who did that work as a volunteer, the suspect, Rene Castro, was arrested in Ontario two days after Johnson's death and has been charged with Johnson's murder. Now, the family of an Oregon mother of three whose body was dumped in Ridgefield is speaking out. The Clark County Medical Examiner says Joanna Speaks was murdered. And as Daisy Caballero reports, her sisters are now looking for justice and answers. Just why? Just how, like, why did this happen? How? It just doesn't make sense. Robin Speaks is desperately searching for answers after her younger sister, 32-year-old Joanna Speaks, was found murdered. We're all just asking every single thing that you could think of. Just, you know, maybe it was this, or did we check here, or we're trying to cover all the bases, but we don't know. Stepsister Ariel Hamby says the family has so many questions. The cause of death was blunt force trauma to the head and neck, and that's all we know. Richfield Police Department and Clark Cowlitz Fire Rescue responded to reports of a body on April 8th. Authorities say located on a property off South 5th Street and 78th Place, about one mile off I-5. Though detectives say it doesn't appear that's where Joanna was killed. And according to the Clark County Sheriff's Office, there are indications that Joanna Speak's body was moved to near this abandoned property. Behind these no trespassing signs, there's an abandoned barn. That's where the Sheriff's Office found Joanna's remains. It keeps me up at night thinking that whoever did this to her and that person is walking around. Joanna lived in the Oregon City area. Her family says she leaves behind seven siblings and three children, her seven-year-old daughter and two teenage sons. You can definitely tell they're sad. They've broke down um, the first couple days, but now it's like they try to avoid talking about it. Her sisters say Joanna had been battling addiction on and off for years, and the last time her family had contact with her was in March. Just, we have amazing memories with her, with her being a big kid. She's hilarious, um, sarcastic, and Very. super witty. Um, so she was just now just the missing piece of our family. The family has started a GoFundMe to help with funeral expenses. And as for finding justice for Joanna. Not a family that gives up and we won't give up fighting, fighting answers, doing whatever we have to to get some sort of peace for her. And that we'll find them. In Ridgefield, Daisy Caballero, KGW News.